can't leave because there are going to be other questions for him. <laughs> you can, you don't have to all stay right. up here now. <laughs> you have to go, oh, you have to go. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So um, we're going to change things up a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is provide an update on the recognized coordinating entity activity. Um, and then we're going to have it turn over to Dave Castle and Dave Pike, who are going to walk through the thinking and assumptions around the QN technical framework. There's going to be a break. And then we're going to talk about the minimum and additional required terms and conditions later. So we're packing all the legal stuff together. Um, we thought it was important since we have been working really in earnest um, since this project was first launched to one, make sure you know who is working on the RCE activities. We have an incredible team. Uh, many of them are here today. Um, my role is really, you know, as the project lead for the RCE work and then working very closely on the common agreement and governance side. And Steve Gravely is, is working with us on that, of course, with other members of the team um, deeply involved as well. Uh, Dave Castle is executive director of Care Quality, tapping into that depth of expertise on these types of um, frameworks and implementation guides. And he's uh, leading the um, QTF work, or the QHEN technical framework. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that you all knew about um, RTI. So RTI we, is part of the project team, um, particularly Stephanie Risk and, and her team, and their role is really working on metrics. That's a part of the scope of the project, and then working with us on these large format um, stakeholder feedback sessions. So I also wanted to make sure I called out other members of our team. Um, so Shauna Hembry, who is uh, really my right hand um, and helping in all things RCE program related and particularly around coordinating um, the many details we, we um, have to uh, address as part of the project. David Getman, who is newer to the team, is working on policy issues. Of course, Dave Pike, thank you very much, um, helping us on the QTF. Mark Siegel is uh, deep in the policy side, did all our co public comment analysis. Even before we heard about the RCE role, we wanted to make sure that we were informed and that we really understood um, at a very fundamental level where the feedback was. We understood our comments and also Chantal Warzala, um, one of the who is helping us, um, and many of you probably know her from her, her tenure previously at the American Hospital Association, but we knew that at the heart of this activity, if we're going to be successful, if ONC was going to be successful, that we have got to galvanize our community and come together and make sure that the TEFCA, the Common Agreement, the Q QTF, that it makes sense and that it's going to work. And um, for us, we really invested quite a lot in our proposal and thinking about that and planning for that. And so I wanted to make sure, just in the spirit of transparency, um, that it was very clear what we're working on and when. And I, I told the folks at ONC, I said, oh my gosh, you know, it's so hard to keep things tight-lipped because I like to share and that's sort of what we're all about. Um, but there are certain aspects of this that have to be held co in confidence, um, particularly around the policy making, and ONC can certainly speak to that. But in terms of what we're doing and how we're approaching the work, um, we were awarded the grant officially on August 29th, and it was publicly announced on September 3rd. We quickly um, were able to uh, kick off the meeting with the ONC team. I do want to introduce the ONC team because folks do ask us, who's working on this at ONC? Well, obviously, you know, Steve Posnack and Dr. Rucker are involved. Um, the common agreement part is largely, and the TEFCA uh, work itself is largely being addressed through Elise Anthony's office. Um, and I wonder if the folks from ONC, if you could raise your hand, Mike Berry. Um, who is our project officer is awesome. His cohort, Kim Taverney, is not here, um, but we work with them truly day in, day out. I speak to you all, the, sometimes more than my team, you know, it's like really, we're always in contact. <laughs> um, then uh, John Rancourt and uh, Jerry, Larry Jessup, um, who have just been phenomenal, really providing the leadership and listening to our harebrained ideas about how we want to do things differently than they thought about. <laughs> and um, I just want to impress on, upon you all how um, invigorating and exciting it is to work with this team. Um, they're as equally motivated as you all are and as we are in finding a way um, to balance this and make it work. And so they've just really, really been amazing. And then Alex Contra, who's not here, has been on point with the QTF. But the one thing I want to say before we get into some of the details is how very um, open ONC has been in this process. Um, you know, we sort of see something in writing. I think Steve said that this very that we see something in writing. We assume that that's the authoritative decision, and you panic and you worry that there isn't 
um, flexibility to adapt it. And, and that is not how this is working. This is different. And we have a tremendous opportunity in front of us to really work in partnership with ONC. And of course, with us at Sequoia, you're our people, right? Um, we, we don't do things in isolation. We have got to have um, a community who's actively involved. So we did launch a website at the end of September. We had a public kickoff call, which was actually even before our stakeholder engagement plan was approved. We sort of said, well, can we just do this public kickoff call? Um, we already really jumped into the details with scoping discussions with ONC around the QTF, assumptions you'll see. Um, Scott, I know you'll, this will appeal to you. We have questions because we need to hear from you all. And again, we need to make sure that this is right size for what is practically needed without ripping and replacing what we have. ONC's done a lot of heavy lifting and critical thinking on the minimum required terms and conditions, the MRTCs. We had three intensive calls with them. They invited us for our feedback on the key areas where we had questions, and they immediately assembled the team and went through every single point with us, and they listened and they're listening to the public comments. And it's exciting to be sort of on the inside of that process and also have ONC um, just being so willing and flexible in their thinking and just being very practically oriented. Our stakeholder engagement strategy was not approved until mid-November because as we were talking with ONC, we were able to broaden the engagement and types of activities we had originally planned. And we have a really exciting set of um, public forums that we'll be hosting. There's one coming up, Dave, I'm sure you'll touch, touch base on it in mid-December. We have targeted stakeholder feedback forums that, that we're having discussions with different stakeholder groups around um, HIEs and pr providers across the continuum and technology organizations and vendors and SDOs. And we have another set of public um, forums in, in 2020 as well as targeted stakeholder forums for consumers and payers and public health. And we know that it's going to take these many touch points to really make sure that all of this work is informed and that it's moving in a direction that is going to be beneficial for all of us. We have made so much progress, there's so much momentum, and there's so much opportunity to continue to accelerate it. And so when we were, you know, really putting pen to paper on the additional terms and conditions, you know, that's something that Sequoia can really, as RCE in conjunction with you all, you know, craft and share more broadly. But those MRTCs, you know, in the nature of contracts, it's an operational vehicle. It's, it's policy, but it's something operational that somebody has to sign and take on liability and has to live with. And so, you know, as we were talking with our colleagues at ONC, we realized we're missing a key component and that the process didn't accommodate a group of potential organizations that would be part of the TEFCI ecosystem to have early eyes on the contract language before it's put out for public comment. And in our experience, we know that words matter. People can accept the policy, but words absolutely matter, and they certainly matter to legal folks, they certainly matter to business people, and so we are really, really thrilled to announce that we are going to be forming a common agreement task force. This group will um, basically be selected through an open process. Um, we think that to fast track um, the TEFCA ecosystem, we will be asking for a call for organizations who are interested, who believe that they they wish to be QHENs, that, that or they are participants in a QHEN, but we think that if we really focus in on those organizations who want to be early adopters of the common agreement in the QTF, that we'll have a process and open application. Um, it also covers really any organizations that meet any of the requirements to engage in a trusted exchange uh, activities under the common agreement. And what that means is there could be representation of organizations, participants, or members who are part of these candidate QHENs that also engage. Um, because of the very uh, the sensitivity around the policy making process and the formal process ONC is required to follow, um, it's not really rulemaking, but it's kind of like rulemaking in that it has to go through formal clearance before they can publish formal policy positions or propose policy positions. That those who are uh, selected to participate in this activity will have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And we're also thinking that there should be a memorandum of understanding where we sort of set forward particular goals, again, around early adoption. We have a lot of details to work through. We will be very transparent in this process. And I just really want to acknowledge the team, again, 
and they took our harebrained idea, you know, all of this angst, pent-up angst we had and channeling uh, the feedback from you all, and they championed this um, and to really do something that's new and novel, and I think that this is just a testimony um, to that th this activity is different, and I, it's different in that we can work in these new and, and novel ways. Um, so with that, I think want to talk a little bit about, and thank you um, to the ONC team. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it would be a big deal to get approval for a task force, but I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. <laughs> so we're really, we're really jazzed. So what's next for us? Well, like I said, we hit the ground running. Um, I think somebody asked me earlier, so when does the RCE work ramp up? And I said about two months ago. <laughs> um, so we are preparing for these targeted stakeholder feedback sessions. Our goal is to open that in open line of dialogue to be as transparent as we can to get this feedback to make sure the work that we're doing is informed and that it is reflects the interests of the, of the community. Um, we were asked to uh, look into a particular policy issue around summary of disclosures. So this is where the public comments weren't exactly leaning toward one way or the other, so we're doing some sleuthing on that. Um, and so it's interesting. There are a lot of nuances that we sort of didn't really appreciate until we got into deeper discussions with the community. So more around that. Um, we're gonna have a call for participation for the Common Agreement Task Force, and of course, gearing up the application for that, um, preparing the legal documents, and then of course, the materials themselves on the work plan. Um, I think I mentioned the feedback sessions. Um, we are, um, you know, in an iterative process with ONC where we're taking their feedback on the ARTCs that we drafted. We'll, talk, we'll share more about that. Um, we also just got a redline version of the MRTCs that consider the public comments and our input. They're listening. It's a really in incredible, again, process because we have the opportunity to do something more iteratively in real time that is in line and keeping with an operational activity. And that's what this is. This is more than just policy. It's more than just meeting public policy goals. It's about making this operational and successful operationally. So we are, uh, Dave and the team, we're gonna talk about the QHIN technical framework next. And then the ever important governance. So Steve Posnack set the stage perfectly about starting with governance and it started over a decade ago. We have to figure out how the RCE activity is gonna be governed going forward. And so we, again, think that this is an important area where we need and want your feedback to help us craft this in a way um, that really engenders public trust and that we can all stand behind as a community. And I think I mentioned, you know, is in our proposal and our public comments, and I'll say it now, this will only be successful if it's trusted. And that means, you know, that you all feel vested in this. So here's a little bit more about our stakeholder engagement with the particular dates. Of course, we're kicking off at our um, annual meeting. That's just the start. We have a December 11th QTF public session. We have our targeted stakeholder sessions on the 12th and 13th. Um, I think there were some questions about if there are others, you know, sort of in the sphere that weren't on the invitation list, you know, can that be expanded? And, you know, we, we want to hear from people. We're just trying to be more structured and targeted in how we do so. And then again in 2020, you'll see we have other targeted stakeholder sessions, again channeling the important perspectives of plans, consumers, and government and public health. We will have a follow-on to the common agreement session this afternoon in early mid-January. We have opportunities that we're gonna be working very closely with ONC at their annual meeting. I heard there's another session, really? Oh, so we're kind of excited there's all this opportunity. And we'll do public calls, and then we're also really delighted to share that our partners at HIMSS have offered to work with us to have um, in-person stakeholder sessions at their conference in conjunction with their conference. And you know, we don't take that lightly. We know time and space is precious and you know, it was a really big meeting and, and it just again speaks to um, the support that we've really had and, and the many organizations who really uh, were backing us as we approached this. So again, a lot of work to cover in 2020 and that is just year one. So with that, um, I will pause here. I don't know if there are any questions.